Om Namah Shiva students. Let's continue reading this story, The Enemy. No more anesthetic, he told Hannah. He turned as swiftly as though he had never paused. And from his medicines, he chose a small vial and from it filled a hypodermic and thrust it into the patient's left arm. Then putting down the needle, he took the man's wrist again. The pulse under his fingers fluttered once or twice and then grew stronger. So students, vial refers to a small container, typically cylindrical and made of glass, used especially for holding liquid medicines. So Sadao stopped Hannah from administering anesthetic anymore. He turned quickly and chose a small bottle from the medicines. He filled a syringe with the medicine and pushed the vaccine into the man's left arm. Sadao placed the needle down and held the man's wrist. The pulse shivered once or twice and then it improved. Just as it seems as if Sadao is going to kill the man, administering what appears to be some sort of drug or poison, it turns out that Sadao is actually continuing to save the man's life. Sadao's sigh reveals how torn he is about fulfilling his duties as a surgeon versus as a Japanese citizen. This man will live in spite of all, he said to Hannah and sighed. The young man woke, so weak, his blue eyes so terrified when he perceived where he was that Hannah felt compelled to apologize. She herself served him for none of the servants would enter the room. So Sadao took a deep breath as he told Hannah that the injured man would live. He woke up, his blue colored eyes were full of fright as he realized where he was. Hannah felt sorry for him. She served him food as the servants refused to enter the room where he was kept. When she came in the first time, she saw him summon his small strength to be prepared for some fearful thing. So when Hannah met the injured man for the first time, she saw him summon his little amount of strength to be prepared for some kind of fearful thing. Don't be afraid, she begged him softly. How come you speak English? He gasped. I was a long time in America, she replied. She saw that he wanted to reply to that, but he could not. And so she knelt and fed him gently from the porcelain spoon. He ate unwillingly, but still he ate. So Hannah said softly to the injured man that he should not be afraid. He was astonished that she could speak in English. Hannah replied that she had lived in America for a long time. The man wanted to speak further, but was not able to do so. Hannah fed him gently with a spoon made of porcelain. The man did not want to eat, but still he ate. Once again, Hannah treats the man tenderly while not liking him showing the conflicting impulse to be kind to a fellow human versus the pool to see him as an enemy because of his whiteness and Americanness. Now he will soon be strong, she said, not liking him and yet moved to comfort him. He did not answer. When Sadao came in the third day after the operation, he found the young man sitting up his face bloodless with the effort. Lie down, Sadao cried. Do you want to die? He forced the man down gently and strongly and examined the wound. You may kill yourself if you do this sort of thing, he scolded. What are you going to do with me? The boy muttered. He looked just now barely 17. Are you going to hand me over? So as Hannah fed the man, she said that soon he would become strong. She said so despite the fact that she disliked him. The man did not reply to her. Sadao visited the man on the third day after the operation. The young boy was sitting but his face was pale and weak due to the effort that he made while sitting. 
Sadaw screamed at him and ordered him to lie down. He said that the man would die if he stressed himself. Sadaw forced him down and inspected the wound that he had operated upon. He scolded the man that he could die if he tried to exert himself. The boy asked Sadaw that what would he do with him now? It seemed that the boy was hardly 17 years old. He asked Sadao that would he hand him over to the Japanese army. This is one of the smaller ways in which Sadao saves the prisoner's life. The man who appears as a young boy now that he has been cleaned up could accidentally kill himself by straining too hard after the surgery. Sadao could simply let the boy kill himself. But he chooses to save his life again by sharply instructing him to lie back down. Meanwhile, Sadao's use of the word ought again brings the duty to one's country to the forefront of the story. For a moment, Sadao did not answer. He finished his examination and then pulled the silk quilt over the man. I do not know myself what I shall do with you. He said, I ought, of course, to give you to the police. You are a prisoner of war. No, do not tell me anything. He put up his hand as he saw the young man was about to speak. Do not even tell me your name unless I ask it. So Sadao did not reply instantly. He completed examining the boy and then put the silk quilt on him. Sadao said that he himself did not know what he should do with the boy. He added that he was supposed to hand him over to the police. He also disclosed that he knew that the boy was a prisoner of war. As Sadao saw that the boy was about to speak, he raised his hand to indicate him not to do so. Sadao asked him not to tell his name unless he asked him to do so. I'm going to end the lesson over here today. Thank you students. Om Namah Shivaya.